What's so funny is in this book, there um, the women are erecting this spring pole, and the spring pole is a ten-foot-tall pole that uh, all day the men ignore it, um, and then they act surprised to find it uh, later in the day whenever they have the the festival. I don't... oh the. There's the spring pole. How did that get there? <laughs> at noon, I guess. In the morning, the men pretend to be surprised to find the pole. Then at noon, the unmarried women would dance around the pole, entwining it with long colored ribbons, while the unmarried men sang. No one knew when the custom began or why. It was an, another thing that was was the way it had always been. But it was an excuse to sing and dance, and nobody in the two rivers needed much excuse for that. <laughs> okay. I just laughed because the men would pretend to be surprised.
Okay. A bowl is a trunk of a tree. Good to know. Um, they're talking about this huge oak tree that grows in the middle of the, uh, I guess it's next to the inn, but it, uh, it just says that it has a bowl 30 paces around, B-O-L-E, like what the heck is a bowl? I guess that's just a different word for trunk. They could have said it had a trunk 30 paces around, but, uh, said they called it a bowl. In the summer, Bran Alvare set tables and benches under those branches, shady with leaves then, where people could enjoy a cup and a cooling breeze while they talked or perhaps set out a board for a game of stones.
this is the point outdoor ask the wisdom when the winter will end and she walks away Did you know gorillas share 98.3 of their DNA with humans? Um, it's not a number that I memorize, but uh, there's a lot of things out there that share a lot of DNA. There's something out there like bananas share some percentage of DNA with humans. <laughs> very genetically similar. I think whenever you take uh, take the fact that there's a lot of living organisms that are alive, that makes them all pretty dang close to each other, genetically speaking, especially when we're all mammals, we're pretty close. It makes you think about, like, what if there was some way for us to alter some DNA and, like, make a gorilla that, when it was born, the DNA, the genes created different vocal cords and they could, they could uh, learn how to talk and stuff like that. But that's a sci-fi thing. Hashtag not my fantasy. Yeah, I was gonna say you you share ninety eight more than ninety eight percent of your DNA with the gorilla. Don't you, <laughs> Lottie Keck?
We have strangers in the two rivers. Last evening. For an instant, Rand stopped breathing. A man on horseback? A man in a black cloak? On a black horse? Did his cloak move in the wind? <laughs> you saw him too? I thought I was the only one. Don't laugh, Rand, but he scared me. The Dark One and all of the Forsaken are bound in Shale Ghoul, beyond the Great Blight, bound by the Creator at the moment of creation, bound until the end of time. Okay, Shale Ghoul. Sounds like something I'm supposed to remember.
I'm gonna start calling you a goob instead of a dork. What's the difference between a goob and a dork? It sounds cooler. <laughs> it sounds cooler. Read it, you read it in that book, didn't you? Goob. Unfortunately, someone calling me a goob kind of harkens me back to the last person that called me a goob, so you probably don't want to do that. But then again, so does Dork, technically. People call me things. Mostly X's. Good morning, Master Althor. Hey, light shone on ya. See you later. Ooh, the Glee Man is coming to town. Rand could remember only two Glee Men coming into the Two Rivers in his whole life. One of those he'd been young enough to sit on Tam's shoulders to watch. A Glee Man with his harp and his flute and his stories and all. Wow. Oh, he came in the middle of the night. No one traveled beyond the village by night. Not these days, certainly not alone. The Thatcher grumbled under his breath again. Too low this time for Rand to understand more than a word or two. Madman. Unnatural. <laughs> he doesn't wear a black cloak, does he? <laughs> These kids are scared of Mr. Black Cloak.
and those fireworks you insisted on sending off for. So there are fireworks. Man, there's going to be a Glee Man. There's going to be fireworks. There's going to be freaking women dancing around the spring pole. Pole dancing, if you will. It's going to be one epic festival. Plus, Matt is bringing a badger to scare all the women. So it's going to be pretty fun. Should have been here a month ago. The first peddler of the year, but there is hasn't been a peddler. Cocos. Handing the first cast of brandy to the mayor. I want a warm fire, my pipe, and a mug of your good ale. a good friend he's helping unload the car
I finally finished chapter one. <laughs> After the, uh, the pre-prologue and the prologue and then chapter one, I'm on now on page 56. 56 pages. Let's see. Fifty seven to sixty nine, the next page is or next chapter is only twelve pages. I'm gonna take a little break, throw some trash, and grab a short snack before I start this chapter. I don't know how many I'm gonna do today. I think I'm just gonna read till dinner time, which is like just another hour and a half.
How many today so far? How many what today so far? Hmm. Ten pages or more. Chapter Two Strangers. Well. You left, and whenever you left, I was still setting up my stream and stuff, so. You probably only read twice as fast as me.
What's up, Gary? This this is a vibe. I'd say so. I'm just doing some read read. Doing all right. Enjoying my weekend off. <laughs> Trying to anyway. How have you been? Do you work weekends? work mornings or something? How are you here so early? And then the first thing you do when you come home is 11 to 6. That's overnight? Or is that afternoon to evening. I guess you don't work overnight at a Wendy's. I worked a lot of years 11 to 7 overnights at places. <laughs> Hotel, security. <laughs> Eh, I mean, I guess it kind of is. It takes its toll, like, whenever all your friends, none of your friends work, uh, overnights. It's like, you're either asleep when they're off work, or they're, yeah, it's difficult. Difficult to have friends. I did that for like five years. <laughs> so does that mean you do breakfast at, at uh, Wendy's or is like, do they have a breakfast all year round or all day, all day long, all year round? I've been wondering about the the breakfast the breakfast at Wendy's. Is it the best? Is it the bomb? I wish I had one of those. I wish I had a close Wendy's and I would pick some up in the morning sometime. better than McDonald's. McDonald's is about the only breakfast I ever get. <laughs> A meat press. <laughs> My first job was at McDonald's. I don't I don't know what you mean by meat press. And why it's gross. <laughs> Yeah, they have, so their grill is like, it's got a top and bottom, and the top is like also hot. So it like cooks cooks the top and bottom, and it comes down and cooks at the same time. It doesn't like 
press so much as it like just cooks the top and bottom at the same time. I don't I don't think that's really gross. It's really fast cooking. So it goes from frozen to cooked really fast, which is kind of weird to me. Wendy's thing is like, we have fresh, never frozen beef. The fries suck. I will, I'll, I'll go to war with you against uh, Wendy's fries because McDonald's fries are way better. <laughs> depends on who's making them kind of depends on where the oil is at if the oil has been uh, and new and fresh if it's got stuff floating around in it <laughs> I don't remember how often we changed out the oil, but I don't think it was daily. Maybe, maybe it had to be daily, or if it was just filtered daily, I don't know. Three times a day. Yeah, I don't remember how fries worked. Fries was like one of those things that like they made new new people do. Yeah, supposedly. That's a <laughs> you got to put a disclaimer on it. <laughs> it's just like we had like a you put your meat in a tray into a warmer and you put a timer on that warmer cuz it's only supposed to be there like 20 minutes. If it's there longer for 20 minutes, you have to throw that meat away. But people would just reset the timer on it. <laughs> so sometimes meat would be in there for like an hour, and it is, it's it tastes worse. But you're not that's you're not supposed to do that. You get fired for doing that technically. That's why I said like supposedly. Supposedly, everything you get is been cooked within the last twenty minutes. <laughs> I always like, whenever I left work, I would cook myself a fresh batch of food and then put it in and then I would order that. Especially when we had the, uh, those Angus beefs. That shit was good. And like the chicken. If you get like grilled chicken and it's not fresh, it's like terrible. <laughs> And nuggets. Look at the chicken nuggets have been in there for a long time. Nasty. I don't really like Wendy's nuggets, but I have a friend that likes Wendy's nuggets. I guess I don't like McDonald's nuggets either. Chicken nuggets are a hard thing for me to like. Oh, um, she wants me to call the friend out. It's Austin. Austin gets nuggets a lot. I think because they're really cheap. You can't beat, like, Chick-fil-A nuggets, though. Chick-fil-A is the bomb.
Wendy's Frosties. Any like soft serve icing, ice cream kind of thing, I'm down for. Like the shakes at McDonald's are amazing. How am I doing? What's up, Gatto Scar One? Gadow, Gadows, Gatto Scar. <clears throat> I don't understand the name very well. Um, this is just Sunday for me. I'm usually playing video games um, throughout the week, but I'm, I'm doing this new thing where I'm doing reading, writing, you know, stuff personal goals kind of things. Right now I'm trying to read the first couple Wheel of Time books before the Wheel of Time series comes out in November. So this this stream is really just kind of to help me focus on that goal, make sure that I actually do some reading on went on Sundays. Um doing great. It's a good Sunday. Just chilling. Waiting for dinner to arrive or dinner time to arrive. I'm gonna cook some chicken breast. How are you, man? Thanks for uh, seeking out those low number viewers. I usually have like maybe five when I play video games. <laughs> fiction or non-fiction? I like to read um, fiction. Um, the only non-fiction type things I like are like uh, documentaries. My, uh, <laughs> we are not ordering Wendy's or going to get Wendy's for dinner. Sorry, say BB6. Um, actually, I, one of the goals, uh, the sub rewards, is uh, if you gift five subs, you get to choose my, my meals. So, if you really want to, uh, <laughs> maybe I move choose a meal to like one. If you sub, I'll get Wendy's. Gift a sub to my good friend, uh, Gatto Scar. <laughs> Existential crisis. That's not good, man. Crises need to be resolved or averted. Um, I really like fantasy. Um, The Lord of the Rings really got me into fantasy at a young age. I was kind of into it a little bit before that, but it got big. Um, so I like to, I like to read fantasy. I mean, I don't like to read at all. Oh, dang, Ghetto. Thank you for the, the gift. I don't know who you gifted to. Uh, side gave it. Oh, thanks, Gary. Giving that man a sub. Are you gonna, are you gonna order us to buy some Wendy's now? I enjoy Wendy's. <laughs> Wendy's is good. <laughs> Sub percent speed run. We are doing, uh, trying to get as many subs of, as we can get for, uh, September. While they're a little bit cheaper, you guys can, uh, get them, use them up, have those nice little sub badges, sub emotes, and whatnot. We, um, I did a, a subathon um, last weekend and blew our our 50 sub goal out of the water. <laughs> and that way we, we unlocked a bunch of little emotes that we can use in the chat. Which is excellent because I have the cutest little pets in the world. The cutest pets ever. Welcome to the deep end. <laughs> Welcome to the deep end. Thanks for the follow. What what is your existential crisis? I'm I'm concerned for you, friend. I don't know if I could help you, but I would definitely try. Sometimes my answers are bad, though. It's like, oh, uh. You should uh, stop doing that. <laughs> um, that's the law. That's that's not necessarily the law, but um, 
you can click the uh, the little notification bell next to your follow. Uh, you can even unfollow, but uh, you can you can turn off notifications. So following doesn't really harm you if you do if you do follow. It annoys me whenever I follow someone and then I forget to turn off the notifications, and then every every other day it's like this person went live. This person went live. Pretty annoying. Here I'll put the sub rewards command. I worked. I've been working on this sub rewards command. Oop. I've been also working on typing. I've never never typed before in my life. <laughs> evil demon hypothesis. <laughs> it's that there's an evil demon in charge of creation. Has fooled you into thinking what you're thinking. That's basically a radical doubt. My intuition tells me it's wrong. I'm not the type of person to be satisfied without proof. Well, I think with those kind of things, like... I was afraid that like what what my advice would be is like go to church. <laughs> uh, I'm a Christian, so I go to church. But um, the the any time the the problem with creation or things fooling you into thinking what you're thinking and searching for like the truth, um, you kind of have to be satisfied without having proof. I mean that's the that's the big problem with uh, religion and faith is that you have to, you, you, there's no proof for any of it so you just kind of have to believe what you want to believe and uh, try to live in the world that we do understand and not care so much about the specifics of oh like what happens when you die where do, where does your soul go when you die like that stuff doesn't really matter in this life. And there's not a lot that you can change or, or, you know, understanding that doesn't really change anything in this life for you, except peace of mind. I think that's why I hit subscribe on Christianity and, or, and I like, I like Christianity, <laughs> whatever you want to say, is because, uh, it, it gives you peace of mind to say, hey, um, there's a there's there's a, a something bigger out there that loves you, cares about you, and they don't want you to be worried about all the stupid stuff. <clears throat> all gods exist. We're only affected by the ones we acknowledge exist. We also exist and don't exist at the same time. Yeah, I mean, for your own personal. Uh, mental well-being like it's technically all theoretical stuff that doesn't matter anyway like it's it's not going to affect your 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 life unless you let it <laughs> which is it sounds like what you're what you're doing is there's an evil demon in charge of your own thoughts he uh i think everybody has those kind of uh, demons, quote unquote, in their in their life. The thing is to um, go against that. Like, be be what you want to be, do what you want to do, think what you want to do, think what you want to think. Um, sometimes I'm like driving past McDonald's and I want to get a double cheeseburger, even though I already ate lunch. And I'm like, get away from me, Satan. <laughs> That's the uh, my favorite Jesus quote is "Get away from me, Satan." 
Yeah, like, whenever we start understanding how to control, like, uh, things as crazy as, like, dreams, maybe we can start caring about um, things that we don't understand, but the thing is, it's in a situa it's a situation where we don't understand or know the truth, we can't logically, we could try to apply some logic to, to dreams and why they happen and stuff. But we we can't tell you the specifics on it. The truth is out there. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is that is the thing I think about sometimes about human knowledge is like uh, everything that we ever know or see or look at was like created by a human you know when if it's if it's words on a page that derives all the way back into the earliest humans on the planet um and it's every, every piece of our knowledge everything we know comes comes from a, a human way 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 long ago so it's it's not infallible knowledge it's it can be completely you know there's a lot of biases and, and subjective nature written in everything that we learn by itself. So like you kind of have, you're stuck to having to believe what you want to believe knowledge. The world denies intuition. To deny logic doesn't make sense. It's saying it is what it is. <laughs> it, it, it's it's impossible to make sense of it all, really. Um, we don't understand intuition, and um, things of that nature. What's the other What's the other word for like the intuition? Like a I don't know something in our genes that tells us how to reproduce and stuff that we don't we don't we don't have to actually it's instinct like what is like <clears throat> you don't have to teach animals how to reproduce you don't have to teach humans how to reproduce they will just do that on instinct and it's really strange to me <laughs> knowledge but as far as as far as your crisis of like how to get away from the, this thought is like I don't know the answer to that <clears throat> people people struggle with that kind of thing all the time where it's like how do I stop thinking about something and I think the the best answer I would have is like just think about something else like you actually don't have to devote your time and, and, and resources and thinking to that subject. You could go on and just look at something else. You could read a book that's on a different subject, which is what I'm trying to do now. Read, read the Wheel of Time and um, play a video game that gets your mind off of things. And The worst thing you could do is like start researching about it because <laughs> then you go down a rabbit hole of a mental confusion and upsetness or whatever. <sighs> Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. You don't really find answers is the problem. You just find a bunch of people talking about things, which you could actually do that in the other direction. Like, you could go... Yeah, you could go looking up things from the Bible and look at it 
and research <clears throat> research all the people that are saying that it's true and research or research all the people that are saying that it's false and then you'll just be confused either way you know, you know? you can have certainty of God existence I'm just stuck on the idea of whether or not you can be sure he's benevolent yeah um the only way to be sure that he's benevolent is to trust Jesus because <laughs> it's what Jesus said. Jesus said that uh, love is the way. <laughs> or ask him yourself. <laughs> nah. I don't like I've developed my own little belief of like in this world does God come in and interfere I don't think that God comes in and interferes with things physically anymore um, I think that he in in his, in the way that God exists can interfere with people's minds and I think that God still kind of exists in that fashion <laughs> That's what that's what Sundays are for, chatting. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to let me read. I'm, not, I'm helping out Gatto Scar. Gatto's car. I still don't know the split up. <laughs> Deep stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I I am bombarded because as a as a person that uh, has like D and D friends, a lot of D and D people for some reason like a huge amount. I would almost maybe even a majority are like non-christian uh i i guess non-christian would be the easiest way to say it but like a lot of agnostic um atheist uh, or anti-christian people and so i end up having a lot of conversations with with D, &D friends about like whether god exists and stuff it's like well we're not really concerned with whether god exists or not we're we're concerned with living our lives to the fullest that's literally what like if god is benevolent god wants us to live our life to the fullest and enjoy the time and he wants us to not ruin anyone else's time here on earth <laughs> that's why doing bad things like murdering other people is is one of the worst things and we're loving other people is the best the idea that one should stop asking questions because they just lead to more questions seems like a defeatist attitude. Because even if it does lead to more questions than you can answer in your lifetime, it doesn't mean there isn't intellectual growth. That that is true. I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you stop asking questions. I would just say that like um, being a person who's worried, um, if you're if you're like worried, anxious. You're living in an existential crisis. Um, stop living in that, and and just try to move past it. If at some point in time you can move back and you can go and do that, go down that rabbit hole, like when you're ready. But like, if you're like sitting there at the computer and you can't sleep at night because you're worried about this situation, just let it go for a little while you can go back to it later <laughs> when you're ready <laughs> i think that's that's like my official advice but like uh, not to s just stop asking questions that's the that's the way that's the way that you create more atheists um is by telling them not to ask questions they just that you're not gonna like you're not gonna help them out that way you're gonna just reinforce the fact that they think Christi Christianity is stupid. Um, I 
But I go back to my earlier point where it's like the whole point of faith and stuff like that is to 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 just believe and that's like almost the whole point of christianity is like just just believe and you'll feel better you, you don't need to do anything else just believe <laughs> it's the power of your own belief that makes you feel good like if you have done a sin knowing that you're forgiven or believing that you're forgiven is the only thing that you need in order to move on from it You don't actually need to, like, sacrifice a goat or something. Unless you think that you do. And then you can try it. See, <laughs> it probably, probably doesn't work as well as... Or introduces other things in your life. I'm not defeatist. I just, um... I don't particularly have a... Uh, an interest in going really really deep on stuff that's all theoretical and we will actually never really I don't think in my lifetime I'll know the answer to this question a state similar to God faith is not necessary because I have knowledge of the facts does God need to have faith that he exists and that he's good I want to be in a similar state simply not possible by the very nature of the human intellect yeah that's that's the thing that i think i, I struggle with too like um how do i keep believing um when i don't know <laughs> eh, well that is one of the things that i'm like I, I, I don't like whenever people are like i know god exists or i know whatever i always am like i believe god exists I don't know. I can't. I don't have proof. <laughs> I, I'll never prove. I'll never prove that he does or doesn't exist. Because really, I don't think that part matters so much as this this exercise in faith, this exercise in believing, and being able to to move your mind toward um, toward peace, having peace of mind. Um. Yeah, I mean, faith not being necessary is, is counter, I mean, that's that's like science. I mean, science, you can't have faith in science, you have to have proof. And then faith is completely separate, like completely separate entities. I don't think that people should try to, oh, let's just have faith that this... Um, this chemistry, these, this concoction that I'm creating works and doesn't kill people or explode or whatever. Like you have to have science in that. And then I don't think that you have to have science in faith. I don't think that you have to go, well, I have to know exactly how things work. I personally, I'm actually am pretty interested in knowing the truth. Um, but like, I've kind of, I'm slowly starting to accept that, like the the absolute truth will be known when 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 I die and go to heaven or whatever. That's a thing that's like I don't even know that that's going to happen. I just believe that that's going to happen, and I got my fingers crossed for it, you know. <laughs> and I have those kind of conversations with uh, like my mom and stuff all the time, like. What are you going to do when you go to heaven? Probably read all the books that exist. <laughs> Probably, I'm just excited to know the truth. I, I told her the other day, like, she'll, she'll probably be haunting me for something, just for fun. And she was like, no, I'll be reading books. And I was like, yeah, but it's if it's eternity, and technically, also, I'm not sure if heaven exists outside of time, you could technically do everything that you want in an instant. So you still have time to haunt me. <laughs> Going into a lot of different, different other things right now, but... <clears throat> there's, there's, it's just something we'll never know. And even if we die, we might not know. If it's... I will, we'll be like, ah, well, shoot, everything I learned about heaven on Earth... 
is just wrong. What the heck? <laughs> All those humans are dumb. They were wrong. Eh, yeah, forgive them. God is a jerk, turns out. <laughs> that, that, that could happen. It's... Everything is in the realm of possibility. So there's, on one on the one end of the spectrum, there's like the possibility that God is the greatest being of all time, and on the other spectrum, it's like God is the jerkiest jerk of all existence. And then there's like a whole spectrum of possibilities there. But we, I don't think we'll ever know the truth. <laughs> not it. Not while we're alive. So I don't, I don't I don't feel like there's a a big need to devote my whole life to to knowing that truth because I don't think that any human will ever know the truth before they die. I think you kind of have to die, learn the truth, somehow come back. Like that's the whole point of of uh, of the New Testament with Jesus coming back. It's like he's like, look, I proved it. <laughs> Um, I don't think humans exist in a timeless state because of their very nature. I think timeless necessity perfection is only possible for God. Yeah, well, that's another theory, though, is once you die, your soul leaves your body, and you have a new body in heaven, and what that body consists of is not human. It's whatever it is after death, you know? So, um, I do believe that humans could exist in a timeless state. Uh, I, I believe that humans have to exist in whatever way they exist after death, and that nobody could ever know what that actually means. <laughs> but I, I do think that Jesus, while he was alive on earth, while he was in the flesh, was trying to trying to tell us how it worked. And it was it's like a thing that's impossible for humans to actually comprehend. Yeah, the, the timeless necessitates perfection only being possible for God. That's part of why I think that like when when God created us in his image uh that is that is things it's kind of like we're copies. But here on here on earth we're kind of going through a uh kind of a soul test is how I how I look at it. Like a, a quality assurance team figuring out if we're a good enough product to have in the next life. Makes you as much sense self-causation. Trying to bring yourself into existence. Doesn't make sense. If you were to be timeless, you would start timeless. You can't ascend into timelessness. Well, I mean, if you have a god that can actually do anything, he could take your soul and turn it into a body. Turn it into what we are here on Earth. So, yeah, he could, he could remove our timelessness. Uh, or, uh, upon creation, he creates... A soul that's ready to be turned timeless. I mean, that's part of <laughs> the, all of the possibilities that we could have that we don't know anything about is how we were created um, and yeah, there's, there's just so many things we're not going to know until we have eternity to figure them all out and we only have about a hundred years so I think that like just uh, whether taking the Bible's word for it is a bad idea or not I'm just gonna take the Bible's word for it and worry about my life here on earth try to make try to make the world a better place for other people um, as much as I can while living with my own humanity, which is it's a it's a battle But we all have our own personal personal
personal tastes, how much we're going to impact the world and how much we're not. Um, I think that all of this theoretical stuff really, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you can kind of tell I have thought about it where I, I've come up with like the, a little, a few of the possibilities and stuff and how, how I believe things work, but like, that doesn't really mean a lot because I don't know. I, I could believe that cars run on gas or cars run on nothing and gas is just a fake thing that you pump into the system and it it just has a sensor that tells you whether or not there is gas and then turns off on purpose even though it could run without gas <laughs> that's a weird analogy but like I, I could just believe that that's a thing I would be I would be looked at like I'm crazy because most people most people just believe that cars run on gas but do they how do we have electric cars? <laughs> I do believe it's obvious if heaven exists. Pretty much nearly certain it does. Then these sorts of questions aren't that important to your salvation. Following the golden rule is much is more important. That doesn't stop me from wanting to know. Yeah, it. I, I feel you there on like, I, I want to know too. Uh, God knows that I want to know. But I think that God has given me the peace, peace of mind in knowing that I, I won't know before I die. I think that's where, I think a few years ago I was like, I was looking at virtues. And one of those virtues is like wisdom. And I was like, I think God has given me the wisdom to know that knowing the truth would kind of be too much for me. Um, so I have to settle for as close to the truth or, or just believing, you know, believing that I will go to heaven and then I'll figure it out. That's really helped me a lot. Um, just to, to know, or just to believe that one day I'll know the truth <laughs> is really what's helped me a lot. Um, and it feels really good to be like, to come to that conclusion and be like, Oh, it's, it's actually okay. Um, there's apparently a system in place that it's impossible to know the truth and that's how it's supposed to be and it's actually working properly because it's safer that way <laughs> um, there's a lot of these like uh, sci-fi um, horror things that like when you see the truth you go crazy and that's like uh, that's what like the Cthulhu um multiverse is about it's like it's all about insanity and things that make you go crazy just by looking at them sort of deal um i also want to say like the do you believe you're you're pretty much nearly certain that heaven exists but that kind of goes back to what i said earlier about like people that say that they know that it exists for certain are just like that has to be a lie because you don't know you can't really be certain um we could literally just lose our consciousness and go black and then people put our bodies in the dirt and that's all that happens i mean the whole the whole thing is just that we don't know we have no clue <laughs> you know people say that they they quote unquote have died and gone to heaven and come back but like those uh, that's also pretty similar to a dream a dream like state that you can uh, people have can like induce you know suffered psychosis comp contemplating these sorts of things they say there's a fine line between genius and insanity <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I definitely went through a period in time where I was like, what is the truth, you know? And I'm, and I, and I was mad for a little bit, you know, I was, I was upset that like, there's a lot of people in the world that are not Christian and 
if God lets them all go to hell, <laughs> I would be pretty mad. I would be pretty upset that, like, people that they would be, they are good people, or they would be good people if they were right about their religion, <laughs> you know? I, you know, I don't want people that are perfectly following their Bible, you know, perfectly following their um, religious text, and just to go to hell because they were wrong. Because thousands of years ago, people started creating and, and working with this religion, and you're being influenced it from thousands of years, and, you know, suddenly, just because you believe what people tell you, you're going to hell for it. I was pretty upset about that because I have a lot of people in my life that I love that are um, atheists or agnostic or some other religion. For a little while there, there was a lot of um, like Wiccan type people that wanted to be Wiccan. I think mostly because it was a popular thing and not because they were actually Wiccan. <laughs> but um, I worry for those people, you know, because... If you ask uh, people who go to church, they're like, oh yeah, those people are going to hell, and stuff like that. <laughs> like, oh well, that's great, but I like to believe in a God that loves us and forgives us for all of our mistakes. One of those mistakes being following the wrong religion. Or believing that God doesn't exist. I, I think that that's not, that's not something that's unforgivable. Given the, given the climate that we've been raised in and whatnot, like, I, I think there's still got to be somewhere along the line, like, you go to heaven and, and Jesus says, hey, that's a good guy there. <laughs> Even though he was completely misled, I think maybe you have to, as soon as you get to heaven, you have to go to a separate little uh, schooling session where they teach you how wrong you were. <laughs> And you have to repent before... If you don't want to repent, they'll just cast you into the fire or whatever. But, um... Yeah, it's it's best not to think too hard about it and just kind of... I think for me, it really helped to just kind of just come up with a way that I think things work. A way that I believe things work. And then um, we'll find out if my prediction is true um, when everybody dies. Like, if... If you're, if I meet you up in heaven, you can, you, I can be like, look, see, I predicted it. It works exactly this way. Or I'll be there to tell you, it sucks that I was so wrong. <laughs> uh, but we, we don't know. We don't know. There's nothing we know for certain. And that, that leaves us all to just make up whatever we want to make up. Whatever helps us sleep at night, you know, whatever makes us feel better. Um... I think he the idea of heaven and a benevolent God makes a lot of people, makes the most people feel better. And I think that's why it's one of the most prominent religions. Maybe I should just start a uh, uh, religion blog. I can talk about things for a long time. <laughs> I have strong faith in the notion that salvation is more based upon your benevolence, based upon Jesus' response to the questioner who asked how you could be saved, and he responded with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yeah, like, I think the you have to know a little bit of history on that, because like, in those days, all Samaritans were like supposedly evil <laughs> and Samaritans were bad people and surprisingly this Samaritan um, stopped and helped a guy that was dying on the side of the road that's all you need to do <laughs> is love love another person like love your neighbor and then like there was there were people like well who's my neighbor Jesus and you're like well who do you think was the neighbor you know was the neighbor the good Samaritan or was the neighbor the guy that walked on by? 
It's, it's kind of weird that uh, he just he spoke in riddles <laughs> and made dumb people feel dumb because <laughs> they were like, oh, so the answer is I just love the guy who lives next door. Well, no, that's not what he was saying at all. Yeah, exactly. Well, so um, in in a lot of churches, they they are getting things wrong, and they're they're saying, you know, the only the only way to get to heaven is um, through Christ. You know, like that's not what Jesus said. I mean, Jesus did say that, but he also was telling people who the neighbors are, who the good people are. So there's like there's kind of this like schism in the church that like it is uh it's it contradicts itself where it's like well the only people who go to heaven are uh people who accept Christ and then on the other side of the coin there's only good people who love other people are going to heaven so it's people just believe what they want to believe and there's Jesus tried his best <laughs> I think I think that Jesus was trying to tell us about the afterlife um, and I don't hear a lot of preachers preaching that I think Jesus was trying to say um, the only way to get to heaven is through me I think he was talking about when you die we go to heaven, you are judged, and if you're a bad person, I'll say, I didn't know you, and if you were a good person, I'll say, let that man in. You know, he's a good Samaritan. He wasn't a Christian in life, but he's a good guy. I think that there's, I think that it's a, it's the weighing of the heart. You know, back in in the Egyptian religion, they have like, they like weigh your soul against a feather. And if your soul is heavier than a feather, you go to hell. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much exactly what, what Jesus and God do at the judgment time whenever you die. Is you go up there and you sort it out. People get sorted out and they go where they belong. Right, but people take, you know, Jesus' quote of, um, you can only go to heaven through me, and they, they blow that, in, they turn that into, oh, you can't go to heaven unless you're Christian. It's a, I mean, it's a logical, it's a logical step, but is it correct? Technically, we don't know if that's correct or not. Uh, it would be really, it would be really sucky if it, if it was true, because I'd go to heaven and I'd be mad. You know, I'd be like, oh, I had a good friend and he was, he was not Christian, but he was a good guy. And then I guess I would like be like, I want to see the evidence as to why this guy deserves to go to hell. And then if the answer is just because he didn't, uh, just because he wasn't Christian, then I'll be pretty upset. So I kind of have to believe in, in my own. I have to believe that what I want is what I'll see. And that's what gives me peace of mind. Um, Yeah, I, I think what Jesus was trying to say, or what the what the Bible was trying to say, is that like when you go to heaven, you will see Jesus, and Jesus will be there, and that is the only way to get in. Um, I think that's the part that's correct about it. I think the that there there are no other means, quote unquote, because 
even if you did something else to get in, you have to go through Jesus and say, hey, what's up? <laughs> Jesus has to give you the, the all clear. But all of it's theoretical, so it's really not worth... It's not worth uh, hurting yourself over, you know? If you're hurting yourself mentally over over whether this it whether it goes this way or it goes that way after in the afterlife then you're um you're doing it wrong you're supposed to be enjoying your life not freaking out about the afterlife although curiosity that's <laughs> curiosity is a b word i'm very very curious i just hope that i'll last until I die without freaking out about it. I probably will. I think I've got it figured out. I definitely think there's other paths, but I think all those paths um, lead to uh, judgment in the afterlife. And Jesus is the is the judgment. <clears throat> Might be an issue of pride. I always get insulted. Someone says something like, it's all theoretical, or it's not knowable. Oh, well... I apologize if you feel insulted about the way I've been treating it. Seems like I don't know what I know with certainty. Seems like projection. Seems to be saying, I haven't figured it out, so there's no way you could have. Um, no. If, if you figured it out, you better tell me. Because <laughs> I'm interested in knowing, too. <laughs> um, uh, I... I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's the, definitely not the reason behind me saying that. Um, I, yeah, yeah, you better tell me, because I want to know the truth too. I'm the, I'm the same, I'm the same way with my curiosity about it. Um, but it's also the, this, the way that people can come to terms with uh, staying in their beliefs, you know. Like, if I want to believe that uh, apples are, are orange and oranges are red, then you telling me that oranges are orange and apples are red is going to make me go, oh, well, it's all theoretical. Nobody's ever seen an apple. Um, so it, it, it helps me have keep peace of mind. Because if, if you if you come in here and you tell me that no heaven in fact works this way, um, I'm not gonna sleep well tonight, you know. And if you prove to me the way that heaven works and it's not satisfactory to the way that I want it to work, then I'm going to I'm going to lose sleep over it, you know. So that it's just a way for for people to say, um, there is no knowing the truth. It, there isn't. But hey, if you spent your life figuring out the truth and you have a uh, pretty good way of summarizing it uh, in a random Twitch chat to one viewer, <laughs> um, then have at it. I would, I would love to be the the person that that. Uh, knows the truth I just have come to the belief that uh, knowing the truth is not good for you that's why I'm saying if God could prove to someone that he exists to someone who is hyper skeptical I mean do you know this the story of uh, Paul in the Bible <laughs> that he was like literally the person hunting down Christians and then suddenly saw the light and became Christian I mean he was 
like the, the, that's the story is he's he is hyper skeptical of the reality of who Jesus is and in the Bible it's written that he was literally blind until he saw Jesus and when he saw Jesus he was like oh shit I believe now that is that is literally God proving that he exists um, but th that just doesn't happen anymore you're supposed to take those examples from the Bible and suddenly believe because you read them <laughs> which is uh, what I think that's what a lot of atheists have problems with <laughs> well, right, I mean, and even, like, there's there's movies and stuff where people die and go to heaven and they're like, am I hallucinating? Like, I mean, you'll be forgiven for thinking that you're hallucinating if you come into contact with God. I mean, they'll be like, I didn't think you were real, and God will be like, I know, I'm trying to prove it to you now. Um, That's one of the things with, like, a lot of people are saying there's certain like drugs and stuff that uh, that make you see truth and reality and uh, help you see God and stuff. It's like I'm kind of interested in that, but I, I, I it kind of sounds like it fucks up your brain, and I don't <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Um, but p people that like to experiment can. I don't want to. I also don't want to endorse that for you. I would say uh, stay away from stay away from uh, hallucinogenic drugs because they are hallucinogenic for a reason but uh hey if somebody comes to find the truth of the universe I think you can like look up videos of people who are talking about it like I saw a god and I <laughs> stuff like that it's it's interesting but it's hard to say whether that's truth or not I think if you same thing happens like if you in your search for the truth found out the truth could you then share the truth with everybody are you allowed would that happen would that work would that make you happy I don't think that me knowing the truth would be good because then I wouldn't be able to share it I think that that's the reality of Godhood that you can't share the truth <clears throat> But, I mean, when when the atheist dies and goes to heaven and sees God and believes they're experiencing a hallucin hallucination, they eventually have to come out of that, right? And what happens after they come out of that is reality. Technically, they don't have a human brain anymore, so whatever happens, happens. You start living in the new reality after that. Personally, I, I would watch a lot of, like, if I went to heaven and, uh, you know, you can do anything you want in heaven, I would watch a lot of reaction videos of atheists realizing they're in heaven. <laughs> Those would be fun to watch. Hyperskeptical worldviews self-collapse. They defeat themselves. The best way to convince a hyperskeptical person they're wrong is asking questions, trying to let them explain their worldview. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, pe people stay firm in their beliefs. Like, uh, you could keep asking questions to, um, like, a flat earther, and they would explain their worldview. <laughs> And then they would, they're, they're just, they're stuck in it. They believe that the earth is flat and they have all this evidence, all the evidence that they personally need to believe that the earth is flat. And if you try to contradict them, then they just, they are just like, well, no, it's not. It's, you're wrong. This is what's correct. Um, sometimes you can pull people out of thinking silly things. Um, with that, with that, with that, uh, that logic, you make them skeptical of their own skepticism.
but um, I think a lot of people are too dumb. A lot of people are really stubborn, um, and they just believe whatever they want to believe, uh, especially if it makes them feel smart. I think a lot of atheists feel smart just because science makes you feel smart whenever you know things, and believing that God is not a part of science, therefore doesn't exist, is makes people feel better, <laughs> makes people feel smart. Being that skeptical is not maintainable for eternity. <laughs> Perhaps for a lifetime, but not eternity. All right, that's you're on my line of thinking now. <laughs> Where like, yeah, people for their entire life can be a skeptic, can be an atheist, can be a flat earther, can be uh, a Christian. They can believe everything they they want to believe for their entire life. So, there you go. believe suppose the pessimism about trying to fix hyper skeptical worldviews is that it might be so embedded in them that you couldn't dissuade them taking an entire lifetime yeah um, that is particularly why I'm not a Christian apologist um, I'm not a you know whenever it comes to defending my own Christianity I'm not I'm not convincing others and converting them. I'm just, it ends up going to, uh, Christianity is, is about what happens after you die. And that is no one knows yet <laughs> sort of thing. Perhaps we'll never know, but you can't tell me that God doesn't exist because I'm taking that to the grave. <laughs> And you can take your non-belief in God to the grave kind of thing, you know? Like, I don't think it's up to us. Nobody said, uh, Gatoscar, you have to convince as many people as you can about Christianity in your lifetime, or else you're not getting into heaven. Nobody ever said that. If you can save someone, it's a good idea to try. That's what my mommy said. Wisdom from mom. Um, that is truth. I mean, but like chasing, like I said, one of the things um, I have a lot of atheist friends. You know, one time I had an atheist coworker, but then they moved away, and I was like, man, I can no longer talk to this atheist coworker. I tried to keep in touch with them, but they didn't want to talk to me. They didn't want to, like, keep up a relationship with me, so I stopped pursuing them, and, you know, I had to talk to my pastor about it, and the pastor is like, hey, it's not, not every single atheist it's up to you to save. Jesus is the one that saves them. <laughs> Jesus goes out and find them. And he he'll, he could do that through you. He could do that through anybody else in the world. Uh, any other Christian, any even a non-Christian, but like it's not solely your responsibility to save that person. Um that's something you put in in God's hands. You put in Jesus's hands because he's the he's the one. He's the shepherd that, that finds the sheep. And you are one of the sheep. And the idea that you want to help is great. That that just is an indicator that you are a good person. But taking responsibility for it and feeling bad if you fail, that's not that's not what God is about. Tried persuading atheists to become Christians, but I do agree. God won't punish you for not being God. <laughs> You're not gonna be punished for not saving as many people as Jesus. Jesus is on a whole nother level. Yeah, Jesus is like literally God. So you, you you try to do the what would Jesus do, but you will never come close. <laughs> you will never come close <laughs> to how good he was. Um, that's just something we have to accept as humans. I think that like, 
I like I like to say as humans a lot. Somebody was making fun of me for it before. They're like, you, you're trying to make it, you're making it sound like you don't think you're a human, <laughs> or like you're <laughs> like you know some other race that's not human. And I was like, no, I just I think that like playing in fantasy games a lot makes me look at humans like they are kind of they're on a whole nother level than what gods are and stuff like that <laughs> all right thanks for chatting hopefully um you can get over the crisis by not worrying so much about it because it's not going to matter for like another 60 70 80 years however old you are and whatever time you die uh, hope you have a nice meal. Hope you enjoy yourself. Have a good weekend. Um, which reminds me, it's almost dinner time already. I wasted an hour and a half just chatting. And the guy that wanted us to eat Wendy's is gone. Should we eat Wendy's or should we eat chicken breast. Wendy's or chicken breasts? Uh, she wants french fries. Got potatoes in there. Tell her she should make some french fries. You want to make some french fries? <laughs> That's what the wife was saying. She's on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Are those Huggies? Those aren't Huggies, those are you saying give please. <laughs> I'm opening a poll. The poll is starting. <laughs> Pasta that? What? You click on the poll above the above the chat and you can vote. Can I vote in this? Yes. <laughs> oh no, looks like it's 50-50. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Yeah, I scrolled up and he, he definitely said enjoy Wendy's, so I guess he he paid for us to go to Wendy's. Poll. A poll is already active. Should we order it or should we go and get it? go nowhere. <laughs>
Okay, be right back. All right, we are going to go ahead and cut the stream off there. Going to go get some dinner. Might be back later. 
thanks for stopping by. Thanks everybody that came to chat and support my day of reading. I only ended up reading one chapter, <laughs> but I did chat for like an hour with that feller. Um, so we may be back later to do another, maybe a video game stream tonight, or maybe I'll just try to do some more reading. Um, I think the stream definitely helped me <sighs> chill and force myself to read a little bit. So thanks. We'll see you later.